It's true. How is that possible? It, it overcame Patrick's grudge. I know, right? Nothing overcomes Even... Patrick's grudges. This goes out to the challengers. Comics and conversation, y'all. What? Keep the conversation moving along. Keep reading comics. Keep your local store strong. If it's hard, then it's a job for the challengers. What? Comics and conversation, y'all. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast with Patrick Brower and W. Dell Bush. You know, Dell, it's a good thing that this is a comics industry business podcast. Yep. Otherwise, I would spend two hours complaining about people not using turn signals. Wow. Two hours? Yeah, like, like <laughs> it happened all day today. Bad enough when I get You're to... You're not even in the car for two hours. I know. I know. That's how long I can complain about it. It's a lot. Yeah. Bad enough I get to the store and can't get to the garage. Oh, Chicago drivers. There is a uh, uh, utility truck parked in the alley. That's disappointing, I guess. It was a weird day because while I was at the store all day, I feel like I missed a whole bunch of stuff. Really? Like Gina told me there were new Marvel Legend uh, vintage announcements today. Not that I saw. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see them. And also, I don't know how she knew about it. When she was at work all day? <laughs> uh, maybe she has updates or she follows different people on social media that will alert her to these things. Maybe. I was on Toy Arc later in the day and I didn't see anything about New Marvel Legends stuff. And they're usually pretty good if Hasbro does like a, a Pulse announcement with new Marvel Legends stuff. They'll usually have like screen caps and stuff of it. Well, did you hear that they announced AEW Unrivaled Series 6 today? No. They sure did. Who's in it? Are you ready? I am sitting down. How many Cody's? No Cody's. What? Also, no Britt Bakers. Aww. Uh, I think they're saving her to launch their second brand. Are you ready? Yes. MJF. A again. Okay, got it. Chris Jericho. Uh-huh. Penta. Uh-huh. Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. Uh-huh. Is that it? No, there's six figures. Dustin. No. Uh, uh, but who did... Hangman Adam Page. Uh, no, he was uh, in the last wave. Oh, was he? Okay. Or the previous wave repeat. Okay. Jake Hager. Jake Hager, got it. And, uh, you like, you only have an Orange Cassidy. Yes. I know you're going to buy this next one. Who is it? Hikaru Shida. Definitely not. Uh, I, I feel like the reason they're repeating figures is because these waves are going to be more commercially available. So instead of re-releasing the walmart exclusive waves they're just going to do new jerichos new whoever so it'll be something where if you got the original ones that's great you can maybe get a new one if you want a different design but if you're someone who never found the first ones didn't want to pay inflated prices just want an mjf here's an mjf well they're definitely more readily available because a figure i just ordered online uh, our good friend Chris Revacant mm -hmm. found it in Target tonight. Yeah, so we know Target's carrying AEW figures. Yeah. Shop AEW's been carrying them. They um, had uh, they had one other figure at Target of a uh, um, from that same wave that uh, Pack is in. Can you guess who it is? Riho. You are correct. <laughs> the figure that nobody seemed to want, but I think <laughs> is maybe the best figure in that wave. Um, maybe. It's interesting how really that that was in that wave. Yeah, he's fine. Okay. I can't be overly enthusiastic about Orange Cassidy. He'd get mad at me. His whole thing is about being incredibly chill, so it's like, meh. How's that Orange Cassidy figure? It's fine. It's okay. Um, You've already said too much. You should just shrug. Meh. Well, I can't can't audibly shrug. I, I could, but I could never do. It. Um, one of the things that's interesting about how different companies are navigating uh, the exclusive figure space is that they're... In, in some ways, they're kind of swinging back from it after really going all in on it in, in 2020, no pun intended. Um, Hasbro recently announced on uh, something that Hasbro Pulse will now be getting 5% of the allocation of any, and this is maybe just for Transformers, but maybe it's everything we're doing, of any store-exclusive figure that's produced. 5% will be available on the Hasbro Pulse website. So for people who don't have a Walmart buy them, or when stuff sells out in a blink of an eye on Target.com, there will be some figures available on Hasbro Pulse. So there does seem to be some some sense from these toy manufacturers that the current model of, you know, the market will sort it out is maybe 
uh, not that reliable. I wonder if their retail partners in these scenarios are annoyed by that because their exclusives are no longer their exclusive. Like, I assume, I, don't know. I assume they have to pay or order X amount to get an exclusive. Probably just order X amount. Yeah, maybe. So I wonder if there's some sort of... Uh, uh, I'm sure there's not. I'm sure it's, okay, then don't make an exclusive. We don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm curious to see what those vintage of those... For sure. Uh, Marvel Legends are. Uh, Dal, you were going to tell me uh, some other AEW news? Oh, yeah. Uh, AEW announced a new signing today. Like, full-time roster member? A full-time roster member, yes. Okay. Uh, this is someone that in the last 12 months, you've probably watched wrestle, I don't know, 40 or 50 times. Is it Red Velvet? It is not. I'm sure she was already on their roster. She's not She's not under contract. Oh, no? Wow. No. After all the stuff they gave her on TV. Wow. Right. Okay. That's why I was surprised. Okay. So it's something like that. Yes, it is similar. That it's, it's like the it's like situation. a uh, big shorty Lee Johnson. Uh, very similar. Yes. Is it the Captain Sean Dean? The Captain Sean Dean is now an official AEW roster member. Nice. The currently winless, the Captain Sean Dean. Uh, we'll probably be getting his first win on Dark sometime soon. I, I imagine. Well, uh, here's another thing I just learned. Mm -hmm. Speaking of AEW, okay. They've already announced. Well, they haven't, but. One of the announcers for the as of yet untitled new show, their their fourth show, their second network show, mm -hmm. um, it confirmed that they are in fact going to be be a, an announcer on that show. Okay. Uh, any any guesses? It is currently a roster member. Okay. Someone who has done uh, a, a significant amount of commentary, but is not like Excalibur or. Tony Schiavone. Um, absolute Ricky Starks? Nope. Pretty Peter Avalon? More commentary than Peter Avalon. Negative one? Oh man, wouldn't that be a thing? <laughs> Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. Okay, that's great. There you are, Chris Jericho. That sounds pretty good. And seeing as how we are basically starting this uh, with no apologies and no comic news, mm -hmm. um, for... Anyone who has heard me mention numerous times that I watch the band Anne Berlin and their live streams, there's one tonight. Mm -hmm. So this will be like one hour and then we're done. <laughs> Do I need to keep an eye on the clock? Oh, no. I uh, I, I have it over here Do you? Okay. by me. Yeah. Uh, and seriously, check out the band Anne Berlin. It's A-N-B-E-R-L-I-N. They may be my favorite band. They're one of my all-time favorite bands. They're so great. And... Knowing my history and my musical pedigree, they are not a metal band. No, they well, are just a they're lot, just a, a lot more melodic than a, that. a pop rock band. Mm -hmm. And I love them, and they're doing all these quarantine live streams. They, the first one they did was like just two of the dudes did one first for fun. Mm -hmm. Then the whole band did one. And it was just like a concert, and then they started doing. They released seven studio albums, and then broke up. Okay, and are now back together. Uh, they released their last studio album. The week that I was in San Diego last. Oh, wow. Back in 2014. Wow. At the San Diego Comic-Con, which was a, a thing that people used to gather and go to. Take your word for it. In a different world. Uh, you were there twice? Once? I was there once. Once. Uh, so, this is album five tonight. Mm, okay. And uh, it, it's going to be spectacular. And, and because of that, it is pushing WandaVision back further. That's fine. Um, a couple of people, hey, did you watch WandaVision? Like, today's? No, you just caught up? Like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Like, nobody nobody said anything about today's. Well, that's good. But I also stayed away from the internet and yeah. from uh, anything that would, would give it away. Because, mm -hmm. obviously, this is the season finale. And this is where all the stops are pulled. Yep. Out. No, no stops. Don't expect any All the stops, stops are, wait, what Except is it? Except for when it ends. We're pulling out all the stops. That it's all So stops. that means it keeps going. Yeah. I, I never bothered to analyze that phrase before. So if you pull out the stop, that means no one has... Like, do you think pulling out the stops is like a stop sign or a physical impediment in the road? The second one, I feel like. Okay. But, like, where are there stops normally in the road? I'm sure it replies to something like for train travel or something like that that's we would not have any use for any longer. Earl Geyer like a streetcar or something. You Earl, know? Earl Geyer could tell me all of the history of these things. Probably. Like, Something like hotcakes. No, I'm telling you, he used to. Mm, I'm, I, I don't doubt it. I never asked that one, nor do I remember the selling a hot, like hotcakes one. Um, 
Why was I saying that? What was what stops were being pulled out? The one division season. Oh finale. right, okay, yeah, nothing comic related. Nope. Uh, this is this is one of those weeks where it was business as usual, and there is a lot of communication amongst retailers in retailer groups, and a lot of it is not supposed to be discussed. But a lot of it fills me with anger, disgust. No, I was going with a with a disgust, disgust thing. Got it. Uh, but the general theme, I think, of most people nowadays is a thing that you and I are encountering regularly: is work isn't f- as much fun as it used to be. Okay, I'm not saying there aren't periods where it's fun. Sure. Like you, you have fun at work. I do. Yeah. Do you have all fun? No. You had a pretty rough Wednesday. I did, yeah. There were a bunch of, uh, I think I described it as a bunch of landmines that I kept discovering where we had done so much work on Tuesday to get everything set up. And then a bunch of things were like, oh, this was a thing we wouldn't have even known until people started buying the books on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, But it all worked out, I think. I thought you might want to elaborate on some of those landmines. (laughs) Okay. No, I mean, it's, it's just basic process stuff where things were not correct and then I had to correct them. Well, the problem with always finding the landmines is you find it and you're like, hey, there's a landmine, don't step on it. It never gets to the point of figuring out who put it there right. and why. Yeah. So all you're doing is not stepping on that landmine. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that there doesn't seem to be any solutions on the horizon. Things no. just keep getting harder. Yeah. For example, today... Several club members signed up for ENIAC. Okay. And one signed up for Berserker. Uh Uh-huh. And when I put them in the system, none of those posted. Yeah. The Berserker one is is a specific problem where because Boom rescheduled it, for whatever reason, there are no orders in the system, despite, I don't think, them being canceled. Or if they were canceled, they were reordered, but something in Comic Suite is not flagging that particular series to add people to it. So it's a thing where when we FOC2... There's going to be a number that says, hey, X amount of people are signed up for it. And then another field where, like, pulled copies exist and there will be a, a zero there. And I'll have to, like, after I order the correct amount of copies, I'll have to go into it and say, okay, now take those copies I just ordered and allocate a bunch of them for subscribers. Uh, ENIAC is, it's always going to be a problem because we order outside of Diamond. And then those numbers are sent from Bad Idea to Diamond for fulfillment. So there's really no way for the, the system to know an issue of ENIAC exists to add it to people's subscription list until that data gets sent to Diamond and that happens like a week or two before the book gets released. So much like the Berserker issues, it's like once that data gets transmitted, then I can sign people up for that issue. So going forward, we still just sign them up like normal. Absolutely. I mean, Berserker is a 12-issue series. Yeah. Eventually the Berserker stuff will sort itself out. It's like... A year ago, we were having issues where um, certain Marvel stuff, uh, I think Marvel stuff, um, was getting, like, rescheduled, and that was causing some problems with, like, we were moving people over from River North to Bucktown, and then books weren't popping up correctly, and it it, it was this really, like, fluid period where we had to keep double-checking to make sure stuff was, was working correctly, and then eventually, once the catalogs realigned uh it was fine and so it'll be the same thing with berserker where like by the time we hit issue four it'll be fine any echo is always gonna be a problem all the bad idea stuff until it starts being like an order through diamond it's just gonna be a problem yeah and when club members say you have me down for all those right technically no Mm -hmm. yeah we have a sheet of paper that says this person wants all bad idea stuff yeah and it's it's getting more and more uh Illegible. Yeah, I'm sure. More names get added in, like, in the spaces that's available. Yeah. So on the club ads sheet this uh, today, I highlighted uh, several of them just to say, hey, I put those books in, but you mm-hmm. can't see them. That's fine. And there's even instances where I was doing uh, lunar FOCs today and things that just don't make any sense. Like there's uh, the the last Future State book from the... Um, actual two month event, not right. the future say Gotham. Right. That's FOC this week, mm-hmm. and 
basing off previous sales mm -hmm. versus what people are signed up for. Like we have two people down for the variant cover for uh, Superman versus Imperius Lex, uh -huh. yet only one person bought a, one of the variant covers last time. <laughs> like we only sold one variant cover. Weird. Uh, it's very weird. We had an issue where there's someone who orders uh, a lot of variant covers, but can't get Pullbox to take the regular covers off their list. Okay. And when they're out for a while, oh, yeah. there's a little stack. Yeah. And then going through, there's like, oh, here's five other books that are on the account, uh -huh. but haven't been pulled. They had been pulled. They were from last purchase. Uh-huh. They were the A covers that needed to go back, but they didn't get taken out. Oh, sure. So of of all of those, uh, one slipped by. Hmm. I'm like, oh no, we we didn't grab this for this person. So I threw it in. And it's like, oh wait, no, they yeah, they did not need that. But I emailed them and said, sorry about this. Here, this is what happened. Yeah. You you had 88 books. There was there was one that was uh not taken out. Yeah. And that is uh um. Another club member mentioned they have difficulty getting pullbox to remove things. Yeah, and we had somebody earlier in the week who had, like, thought they had subscribed or signed up for Infinite Frontier Zero, and on one screen it says they ordered it, but on another screen of theirs it said they didn't order it, and we'd never gotten any, like, data from pullbox saying this person wants to be signed up for Infinite Frontier. So it was a situation where I told them, and I, I would tell anybody who's, who's having problems with the actual pullbox interface... Uh, please send those problems to the developers at Pullbox. Uh, there is a feedback button. Uh, you can let them know if something isn't working right. Uh, it's unfortunately something where I, we don't code it, so there's really nothing I can do about it beyond telling the developers, and I'm doing it secondhand at that point. And do you think that has a little more weight when it's a customer reaching them directly as opposed to us saying, hey, here's a list of issues? I mean, I would say it has equal weight, but I, it's more the matter of if they have follow-up questions, I can't answer them. Yeah. Like... If a pullbox developer comes to me and goes, okay, well, how did that book get added? What time? What browser? Was it mobile? Was it desktop? I'd be like, I, he, let me send all that to the person who had the problem. Um, so that's why I would definitely say, like, if you are experiencing a problem with pullbox, uh, tell the people at pullbox. That's the only way it gets improved. They don't know there's problems unless you tell them. I had a uh, club member today say, I have a question about Heroes Reborn and Avengers. Yeah. When Heroes Reborn is over, is it just go back to regular Avengers? And I just gave one of the Dal Bush audible shrugs. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. I assume there always will always be an Avengers maybe, title. Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen as a result of Heroes Reborn. It could be the final storyline that Jason Aaron was going to tell. And after this, it, it goes on a brief hiatus and then gets relaunched with a new writer and a new number one. Or That's a possibility. maybe the new Avengers team is just Squadron Supreme. I doubt that. <laughs> Unless they're getting a TV show or a movie, probably not. Hmm. Like there'll be another Avengers movie. Come on. Dude. I would really love it if Marvel Studios decided to do for Disney Plus a uh, like a TV movie with the Squadron Supreme of America, and they just do like a big Snyder cut thing, <laughs> where it's just done in that really ponderous thing with like a different Leonard Cohen song in the background or whatever, super desaturated colors, all that stuff. Like that would be really funny to me. I don't think they would ever do that, though. Uh, speaking of Snyder Cut, this has nothing to do but with Hyperion anything. But Hyperion has a really, mustache. <laughs> um, people were complaining today, and I found out about this at the very, very end of the day, mm -hmm. that uh, for Space Jam 2, uh -huh. they've not redesigned Lola Bunny. <laughs> okay. They've changed her outfit. Okay. And made her more realistically proportioned. Okay. And people online... Men online uh, are freaking out. Oh no! How dare you change our furry goddess? Oh no! That was a quote. Oh no! So basically, she's wearing a normal basketball uniform. Uh huh. And and doesn't have a giant uh, chest. Okay. So grown grown adults grown, grown adult are men. complaining about a female cartoon rabbit. That is horrifying. Yep. I don't that know. is the world in which we live. I don't know that I like hearing about that. <laughs> Um, I think it's interesting sometimes how we get people to backpedal from their opinions. Uh -huh. Where today, somebody was... We were talking about uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates ending his Black Panther run. Mm -hmm. And they said, I wonder what they do next. Probably just give it to someone like Jason Aaron. 
And I go, oh, that'd be great. I love Jason Aaron. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I just, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Zuni and Avengers. Oh, I think Avengers is so much fun right now. I, I, I like that kind of, uh, uh, like, just battle world stuff, the contest of champion stuff. Yeah, you know, so, like, and then going back uh -huh. to, like, to say nice things about Jason Aaron, like, you cannot like him. It's okay. Yeah. We're just having a discussion. I yeah. don't need to have you agree with me. Yeah. It, it was pretty funny, though. Like, no, I, I, Jason I've Aaron is their example of, uh, oh, God, this would be terrible. Yeah. Nope, I would love it. Uh, I think it's fun. Well, Dal, this is a uh, this is really a point where I need you to to start suggesting stuff. And yawning definitely doesn't help. It helps me because I feel like anything that I bring up to talk about, which is this this podcast is supposed to be a realistic look of our week, uh -huh. at our week, uh -huh. towards our week, what sure. have you. But more and more lately, I feel like it is PTSD for you. Uh, or bringing up things that remind you oh, of things maybe. you hate. I mean, I just don't. I, I'm. I don't want to say I'm tired of complaining, but it, it. I think it's a little redundant to just make every episode of this like here's something else that some publisher screwed up. Like, all oh. right, then give me something good. Sure. Uh, did you read Joker number one? I did. I did two today. I thought it was actually more interesting than I thought it was going to be. You know why? Because it's a Jim Gordon book. It's not about the Joker. No, I mean it's about the Joker, but it's it's a Jim Gordon comic. It's not the Joker. Right. Uh, I will say that David Harper is doing a piece about the Joker, and I don't know when it comes out. Mm -hmm. But I April will say, Fool's Day. I will say that I went off on a little rant, and you, I don't know that one. it will be uh, actually published. But I said, I wonder if publishers sometimes have a moral responsibility to not glorify certain characters, for example. The Joker, mm -hmm. the Batman who laughs, uh, Venom, the Punisher. Characters who, through no fault of the publisher, have taken on a different real world persona. How many people, how many crimes, how many vehement crimes have been committed by people garbed as the Joker? Uh, a non zero amount, that's for sure. Yeah, um, and by giving these characters their own series. Mm -hmm. They're perpetuating that. And I acknowledge that, A, it's a business and they're making money and these books sell. And also, B, we are still stocking those comics. Yeah, um, I don't know if I would maybe argue with the uh, the phrase glorifying. I don't know if, if that's exactly what's happening. I think profiting off of, you could say that. <laughs> All right, well, making them appeal to people. Well, that's the thing. I, they, they already appeal to people. Like, this is... In, in some ways, this is the market working as intended. This isn't them creating a character like the Joker and then shoving it down people's throats. This is people saying, I want to buy anything Joker that comes out and a company devoted to profit saying, then we'll just make Joker stuff. Um, reading Joker number one, I don't know that I felt like it was morally compromised in any way. I mean, it, it, it didn't, like, luxuriate in, you know, edgelord nonsense or in uh, super dark storytelling or... It didn't try and get into the psyche of the Joker at all. It wasn't like the Joker movie where it's like, well, here's where he's where where it all comes from. It's, it's not. not his fault. Yeah, it's it's none of he's that. Misunderstood. It's not like society failed the Joker or whatever. It's very much just the idea of like Jim Gordon as a guy who is dealing with like the guilt over the Joker constantly getting away, like the Joker consistently having like a reign of terror and then like going into Arkham or eluding justice or whatever and then doing it all again and sort of how that's worn worn him down over the years and and as a guy who's reaching you know the end of his career like what how does he feel about that being left unsolved and how does he feel about that character still being around to terrorize people um so it's it's got that kind of like unforgiven you know one last job sort of thing and I, I thought it it was restrained in a lot of ways, both in the writing and then Guillaume March's art was, it's, it's hard to look at that and go, this is the guy who did Carmen, you know? I don't know because I didn't read Carmen. Well, Carmen is a lot more, um, the sort of stuff that you would see him do on like Catwoman covers and things like that. Sexy ladies. Yeah. Or, or just like not as gritty as this, this, this has a lot more thick lines and shadows and it's, it feels like it's trying to exist in, a recognizable world instead of like an artist who likes drawing certain things. 
so I yeah I I wouldn't say that that I liked the Joker comic because I was really never the audience for it, but I thought it was better than I was expecting it to be, for a book that I would not have cared less if they'd never made. Uh, if you are someone who likes Batman and the Joker, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, I don't feel like I'll be continuing with it, but it doesn't bother me that it exists. The way James Tynan tells it is that DC came to him and said, hey, we want to do a Joker story. Will you write sure it? they do. <laughs> and he said, I don't want to write a Joker book. And then he thought about it a few day, for a few days and he goes, oh, no, wait, I have an idea. Yeah. And that idea was to make it about Jim Gordon. Yeah. Which, I mean, by far is more interesting. Um, but it's still a thing where it's Jim Gordon hunting down the Joker. And it does tie into the current Batman book. Uh, one of the things that, that I had to do a double take on, because I didn't really read Batman. I sort of flipped through it. Mm -hmm. um, but I read Infinite Frontier Zero, and I'd forgotten that the big, like, Arkham Asylum... Event. Just say event for those yeah, who haven't read it. Event. Is called A-Day. Yeah. And they explain what that means in, in Joker number one. But as someone who played the Avengers game, uh, their, their big, huge, like, earth-shattering event is also called A-Day. And it's been called that for, like, a year. So they do that like a, they've been doing it in the Batman book now for a month. It's like, yeah, really? No, I think nobody caught that. Nobody was like, "What if we called it a different letter?" <laughs> I I think just calling it a day at, in general is not a good idea. That is not how it would work in the real world. We had we have D Day, sure, sure. Well, and on but top that's of the that, only like when you look at um, September eleventh, mm -hmm. it's not S Day, right? And and honestly, the bigger problem for me is that. When when you hear something like A-Day, you think of something where it's like, this was a massive event that affected a region, if not a country, if not a world. And instead, it's like, no, this was a thing that happened in one building. I mean, it, it was bad. Like, th it, there's a body count. It's really high. But it's still a thing that happened in one building in Gotham City. So they, I don't know, like, the, the day suffix is like, day? Really? <laughs> it's not like there was, like, a, a global blackout or, you know... Uh, demons came up out of the ground for a day. Like, nope, it was just a thing that happened in a building, and it's sad, but it's not... Yeah, I don't know. The the day suffix is the thing I keep tripping over, is like, oh, that thing? That's a day now? Yeah. All right. Another thing that James Tynan had said about his current run on Batman is while he loves the classic iteration of Batman living in Wayne Manor, Jim Gordon is police commissioner. Mm -hmm. That's all changed. Yeah. That's, this is, this is like, that happened. Now it's evolved. You know, po police commissioners aren't commissioners forever. Mm -hmm. There's new people. How many mayors have e there been in the Gotham? Jim Gordon has been commissioner and not commissioner and then commissioner again a few times. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, like you know that's what? the thing that every I time they do, they're like, I firmly believe he quit. Jim oh, Gordon will be commissioner at some other point. Yeah, probably. But moving forward, Batman does isn't rich. Well, he's rich, but he's not wealthy. All right. He lives in the city. He has less tech. You know, this this is this is the Batman of today. Mm -hmm. Not but, future state. But, like, look at Oracle, you know? Yeah. Batgirl, and then she became Oracle, and then she became Batgirl again, and then she became Oracle again. Yeah. Like, these, th these things always move back and forth between, you know, uh, templates. As a real, live human being, I would much rather be on the computer looking things up than... Getting punched in the face by a guy who looks like a mom. Guy in the chair. Gal in the chair. And it makes perfect sense that the character would be like, hey, maybe I can just sit back and yeah. not fight except when I'm needed and like let let the, the young people do yeah. it. Hey, the book where I was in a costume swinging around the city just got canceled. Maybe I should try a different identity for just a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, there's a level of how much do you feel the character would say that versus, oh, we need someone to do this, so it's going to be her. No, I, I I mean, I think the market realities and the the character storytelling coincide in this one. Like, I, I think the time was right for Barbara Gordon to make a change, and I also think the time was right for DC Comics to make a change with Barbara Gordon. We made a change with everybody. Wouldn't it be uh, beneficial to us if at least the first issue of everything in Front Frontier related, except for Batman, was returnable? That would be great. As it is, I mean, we didn't really up our numbers a whole lot, I don't think. But we upped everything a little bit. Sure, but we didn't go crazy with anything because, as we've seen, like, the odds of people picking up Wonder Woman 770 when they've not picked up 769 or 768, not great. But it's the, the future last, state writers. Right, but that's the thing. The last few writers have come on 
to Wonder Woman without them changing the numbers, and people do not treat it like a jump-on point. I mean, Even if we shove it into people's hands, they're still like, eh. We definitely went up for the Marco Tamaki stuff, uh-huh. uh, but then it fell back quickly. Yeah. Because it honestly wasn't great. No, the stories weren't that good. <laughs> uh, I will I will ask you this, since uh, mm-hmm. you read Joker. What did you think of Wonder Woman? Oh, uh, it was all right. Mm-hmm. It's doing a different pantheon than the the Greek pantheon, so that's nice. But I mean, it was all right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's weird to me. It's all right. It felt a lot like Kelly Sue DeConnick's first Aquaman. Oh yeah, I can see that. Where in theory you're like, hey, we're gonna get a bunch of new people looking at this, but let's make it as completely different as possible. Yeah, and and Let, let's trip uh, away so everything confusing. you know about the character yeah. in favor of like rebuilding that character as we like. But, I mean, the, the flip side of that is, like, the Mark Tamaki thing was exactly what you would want normally. Yeah. Where it's, like, Wonder Woman, and she does Wonder Woman stuff, and here's Etta Candy, and here's Max Lord from the upcoming movie, and here's, you know, all this stuff, and it's, like, and that didn't work either. So, I don't know, yeah, maybe you go the other way with it. What about Superman? I didn't care for it at all. No. At all. Uh, I thought the art was really rushed and, and brief. Yeah, and and the story itself was incredibly thin. Yeah. Like, I didn't feel like there was really anything going on, and, and I didn't care about the stuff with John Kent at all. And just, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a gigantic miss. Just uh, every idea that was on that page was like, oh, no, I don't like this. Yeah, did not care for it at all. It's it's so weird. It feels like this is almost the New 52, a rebirth again, you know, where Pretty it's much. like everything except Batman has brand new creative teams, brand new directions. Yeah. And... You're going to read them, and I mean you personally, yeah. and I'm going to read them and be like, yeah, what what is this world of potential they're giving us? And then immediately it's like, oh, no, turned off. Yeah. Can't, can't promote this. No, and I mean, there, there's, God knows, there's no shortage of things to promote in March. So I don't, I don't feel like, you know, I'm losing money by not having a good Superman book because it's like, well, people can just buy Berserker or John and the Impossible Monsters or uh, Children of the Atom or carmen or whatever i mean there's zero shortage of of sellable books this was a weird day in the store because we didn't sell that many like a pitched berserker and any oh here's here's my favorite mm-hmm. uh a new a new club member who's down for just any mm-hmm. came in and he also picked up fear case okay i'm like hey since you're getting uh These two, two matt kid books here's berserker oh i already got that oh all right yeah i kickstarted it Oh, oh, all right. Well, you're not going to get to read it for, like, a year or I, something? So I say literally that thing. He's like, no, I know, but I, I still bought an issue to read. Right. Oh, you probably bought it at your regular comic shop, uh, and you're just coming here for a bad idea. Right. But, I mean, we got a fear case out of it, so... Sure. It's just like, oh, man, like, when people come in on a Wednesday, and this mm-hmm. wasn't Wednesday, but come in on Wednesday, and you're like, hey, what about this book? Oh, I got that ready. Where? Yeah. It's like noon. Yeah. And why did you get all this stuff there? Right. I don't get it. And I just felt like, oh, man. <laughs> like, the promise, and I know this was in a different world, but the promise of Bad Idea was new customers would find the store and be like, yeah, this is this is great. Right. But instead, what we're finding is, I mean, like, there's kind of two customers. The people who are already shopping at Challengers are just getting a Bad Idea book as well. And then we've got people who are coming to Challengers from other stores, and all they're getting from us is bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're not shifting over their subscription list, and they're not, like, trying out a bunch of new stuff. They they literally are just like, I got everything else someplace else. I had to come here to get this. The end. So that's that's not great. I guess this is a good way to segue to talking about how the bad idea books actually work now that they're on the shelves. Okay. Because uh, we were talking for like, months now about our trepidation... And our frustrations and our hopes about what Bad Idea was going to mean for Challengers and how, like, a super limited book that's kind of, you know, doing a lot of collector stuff is going to work with a store like ours that's very much reader-focused and does not really do collector stuff. And this, this happens, I don't want to say a lot, but it happens frequently where we will get really nervous about something and create all these procedures and all these steps and then... The thing happens, and none of them are necessary. Nobody cares. Yeah. Like, we were... Um, when the Bad Idea uh, preview books were coming out, those were limited. It was limited to one per person. They gave us, you know, stacks of them, but it's like, okay, well, this is one per person, just like the Bad Idea books. 
Um, these things are going for like $12 online. So people are definitely going to try and scam us. They're going to come in with like their family members, their friends and make everybody take a copy. Even though, you know, that person's never going to read it. They're going to hand it back to the person who brought them. As soon as they leave the store, we're going to have people like, you know, wearing different hats at different points in the day to try and get extra copies. We're going to have song and dances from regular customers who are like, can I please get one for my cousin? He can't make it in or, Oh, a friend of mine really wanted to come by, but he had to work. And then none of that happened. We still have copies of that preview book, like, a month and a half later? Yeah. Like, uh, there were people day of who were, who were, like, they had to get theirs and they had to make sure they got the most pristine copy. But most people didn't care. We were able to just put it into, like, regular customers' hands because they'd go, what's a bad idea? And we're like, oh, take a preview book, see what you think. It was sort of the same thing for ENIAC 1, where we definitely saw some people that were brand new to the store to get ENIAC number 1. And we had a few people who tried to do the, like, oh, can I get both covers? Like, no, you can only get one because it's... Yeah, regardless of first print or not first print, the rule is still just one per yeah, person yeah. per lifetime. You are limited to one copy of any Act 1. Whether you want that to be the first printing or the not first printing, you got to pick one. We'll let you choose. Yeah. But we didn't sell out of either printing on the day of release. Uh, we The line of people outside the store for any Act was one person. It sold okay. Um, I, I think I'm glad we have the copies we have because I feel like, this, especially the not first print editions, will keep us in good stead for a while. That'll be a book that we can continuously promote to people in a way that I was afraid we would run out like day of and then you spend a month going, I don't know when we're going to get more copies of the non-first print edition. Well, here's why we can happily promote the book. It's good. Yeah, that's the other thing is that, uh, and I heard Kent when he was talking to somebody about it, somebody asked how it was and Kent's like, I read it, it was actually really good. Uh, the re some of the reviews today, Polygon I think had a review of it and they talked about, I think it was Polygon, maybe it was The Beat, had a thing where they they had talked about how yeah it's super limited and yeah that's making a lot of retailers really frustrated um book itself is good it was the beat i want to say okay because they, they ended up picking it up at like a local store um they had it on their pulls list and they got pulled it for them um and so yeah now that the book is actually out uh yeah it's actually a good comic it, it came together it's a good story by good creators it can be judged on its own merits instead of like as a you know totem for everything bad ideas trying to do for the market regardless of of all of that what bad ideas doing for the market blah 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 mm -hmm. it's a good book it's a high quality book yeah it's good paper stock it's good printing the cover is real thick yeah. four bucks you get a long story plus you get a backup story yeah i mean it's definitely definitely a deal at four bucks yeah um there have been stories all across the industry about <laughs> i'm sure stores not even giving subscribers first prints that was something that we were afraid we were going to have to do because of how limited the first prints were going to be right but, but luckily our numbers worked out this was somebody came to get it and was told it's the owner's money he can do what he wants with those books yeah i mean we we know for a fact there was one store already that broke bad ideas rule that you can't sell it for more than cover price in the first 30 days like as as a Bad Idea Destination Store, we were part of a mass email from Bad Idea saying somebody has already been banned for life from carrying Bad Idea books because they broke that rule. So let me elaborate on that story. Mm, please. Uh, I know the store. Okay. And I don't have any problem saying who it was because they've already publicly apologized. Uh-huh. But they were already no longer a Bad Idea Destination Store. Okay. Like they opted out. Oh, okay. They had already committed to, to, like, they already paid for or whatever, committed to whatever. Yeah, the, the first month. But they're like, you know what? This is not for us. We're not going to move forward. Okay. So at that point, they figured they could do whatever they wanted. I mean, they're not wrong, technically. And they felt like their uh, their listings for the book, well, they were selling the books on their Facebook Live event for uh, $125. Oh, my God. Saying that that's well below market value. It is, but that market value is bizarre. Like, that right. market value was derived before the books actually came out. I don't know that every store is selling out. Maybe they are. Uh, we haven't, I don't think. Sure. Do we Do we still have first prints? Do you remember? We do not. Okay. But we have plenty of not first prints. Yeah. Yeah. And they... Since then, you know, they, they offered this long apology called it an error in judgment. Mm -hmm. They took down everything that they were selling for the higher price and for the Facebook things that already went through, uh -huh. they're going to donate the money to charities. Okay. And they've also offered to either uh, sell back at cost all of the books to Bad Idea mm -hmm. or to just give them to other stores, like friends of theirs or whoever uh, Bad Idea says, 
no, like those people need them or whatever okay. for their first prints. Yeah. So I mean, yes, they are banned. But they're not. They they can't sell bad idea books anymore. Mm-hmm. But they already kind of decided not to. Sure. And you and I saw instances of people pre-selling them online, like offering them on eBay for ridiculous prices. Oh, completely like absurd. Eight hundred dollars. Yeah. But this was Tuesday night before the books came out. Right. And this listing. This person said they had two copies, which you shouldn't have two copies. Yeah, they had a confirmation email that they posted in the eBay listing from a, a Bad Idea destination store, and we know which one it was, um, and it, and that it said showed, they were getting two copies. Right. However, right. However, when we were offering Bad Idea books on our website, which we are not doing because I don't even look. Well, I mean, I mean we'll, the second print. Yeah, we'll have be, the, the not, not first print prints, but I mean, on Saturday night, we still have them. So we had people try to buy multiples, and it had to be refused. Yeah, so, I mean, basically what, what we had was we had said in the listing when we were doing, uh, originally we were doing pre-orders for the first four issues of ENIAC on our our Square store, uh, which no longer exists, um, where we had said, you know, you cannot order more than one set of, of all four issues. If we see you do more than one set, we're going to cancel any additional orders. But there was no way in the system that we could bar people from doing it. Our, the, the Square store was not set up for that. It didn't yeah. have that kind so of functionality. It, it would let people, we would stop it on our yeah. end. Um, so it's even conceivable that somebody could show, oh, well, I got two from Challengers. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, there's somebody out there who has two completely unique confirmation emails showing they're getting two sets of four. Um, but yeah, the, the second one, once we saw it, we're like, oh, no, canceled and refunded. Um, and at no point did anybody say, well, forget it. I don't want them. They'll, yeah. They took what they could get. And that's the thing that we'll have to do on uh, the Shopify store. where We'll have a thing on every Bad Idea comic that says one copy per person per life. So if we see you doing a second one, like, it's going to get canceled. And, I mean, basically, like, th- I'm probably going to put language in there saying, if you try to order more, like, don't do a second order down the line where you order one because that's going to get canceled, too. If you try to order more than one copy on just the first go, I'm going to cancel the whole order. I'm and not, that's what, that's I'm what not other move stores it down to doing. zero. I'm just going to be like, oh, you ordered five? You're getting zero. Yeah. That order's canceled. Uh, that's what other stores have been doing. Yeah. Because um, you yeah. want to say that everybody knows this, but they don't. There's still people that don't even know what a bad idea is. Sure. And again, it'll be on every single listing. You, you can't order a book on our storefront without looking at the listing. That's where the order button is. So you'd have to look past that notation and then click the add to cart button so people there, there's no reason why people wouldn't know that other than uh they either didn't read it which i don't love or they're trying to get around it which i also don't love but yeah we'll see what happens saturday night when any remaining copies go up on our website i also like that you just did what you said we always do with you worried about people trying to screw us and, and take advantage of a thing sure. and and but no, we, you and, have and to. No one cares. But that, but that you have to have these procedures in place. Oh, absolutely. Just in case you have yeah. to. Yeah. Again, I mean, we already had somebody. We only had four people order the uh, the ENIAC one through four on our online storefront, and twenty five percent of them tried to order a second set. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's like okay, well that's that's what happens. Let's not forget the one customer who tried to sign up online for ten copies of just the first issue of anything Bad Idea does. Yeah. Not the way this works. And wanted to know if they could get them all CGC'd before they were sent out to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, okay. And that was the point where we decided we didn't want to do online pre-orders for any Bad Idea books. <laughs> yeah. Just decided against it. Decided, oh, this is a $4 comic book. That is a huge hassle. <laughs> and then that same person, Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. No, Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Tuesday at, morning at 3 a.m. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're in a different continent, so I... How, how have I... How can I get my books? Yeah. I, I ordered these books. Yeah. Where, it, where are my books? It, it, it must be in by now. Uh, how do I get it shipped out? And I had to go, okay, <laughs> it's Tuesday morning. We haven't gotten it yet. Don't Please don't do this. It is a $4 comic book, and you're already making me do so much work for the, like, $2.40 uh, profit I'm making on this. It is already too much trouble, which, again... Why we stopped doing online pre-orders for Bad Idea Books. Because yep. it's just... I can't stress this enough. We're making like a little over $2 a copy. It is not worth the hassle. It's just not. I want to help people out, but man, oh man. It's just not worth it. There were a couple of people that had called and asked to have Bad Idea Books put aside. Nope. And I said no. Nope. 
First come, and first serve. And one of them was like, well, I'm coming from Rockford. Okay, great. Okay, good luck. Well, I can't make it today. Okay. Yeah. They'll, they'll still be here. And guess what? They still are. Yeah. They're still there. We have, we have plenty of the not first prints available. Yeah. Uh, and like we said, I was, or I said specifically, I was ready to really hold all of the bad idea decisions and the procedures that have made this an unpleasant experience against the book. Mm-hmm. I can't. No. The book is too good. Yeah. It overcame your general frustration with stocking bad idea comic books. Yeah. That's how good it is, people. I mean, it overcame my frustration. It's true. How is that possible? It it overcame Patrick's uh, grudge. I know, right? Nothing overcomes Even Patrick's grudges. The, uh, we talked about this last week, how we weren't super excited that they were trying to, not militarize, but like, a call to arms. What is the, what is the word that's like, they, they're trying to ex- mobilize. incite? Mobilize, I guess? People to camp out. Oh yeah. To be in line to get the first be oh, the first yeah. person in line. Not into that. To get the that feels real toned up. Little pin, the little ENIAC number one pin uh, to say you're the first one that got did in that the store. Show up? So and as as Dad mentioned earlier this podcast, we had one person waiting. They got there at eight o'clock. It's three hours before we open. Mm-hmm. Um but they were there for the like they they like they said they liked yeah the camping out and they wanted the camaraderie yeah. they were surprised nobody else showed up no and honestly it was a pretty nice day so yeah I mean we've had colder early marches uh, and we were we got there a little bit early we're like oh there's somebody outside already yeah because again we were expecting like okay so there's going to be a ton of people we're going to have to figure out like how do we let any people in at a at a reasonable clip while also letting subscribers in to get their books so they don't have to wait in some line when they don't even care about this other book. And then it was all moot. It didn't matter yeah. at all. It especially didn't matter because we still have not gotten that button in the mail. Yeah, but at least we know who's getting it. Eric is definitely getting the button. He got yeah, there and first. and he was cool about far. it. I, I feel a little bad because he didn't get to participate in any of these social media, I got mine kind of thing. Yeah. And there was a lot sucks. of that going on. I feel bad. I do too, but it, like, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. Uh, there's There were a lot of posts of people who were, who were getting theirs and what have you. That's cool. But... Um, I, I'm happy that it's somebody we like. Yeah, I mean, certainly if it had been someone where the experience was uh, uncomfortable, where and, they, and they were trying to get multiple copies, or they brought, again, like their whole family or whatever, then it'd be like, I don't want to it was someone we didn't person. recognize. Sure, I get you. You know, but it's it's a it's a uh, club member who's been with us for a while. Yeah. Uh, it has experimental taste in things, so yeah. Sure. Uh, I was happy that was the case. Big but, AWA fan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I was very... I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed we still haven't gotten the, the pin yet. That is disappointing. And while we can debate amongst ourselves whatever happened forever, whatever happened with the Hero, Hero Trade, Trade yeah. neither one of us would have misplaced this, and nobody no. else <laughs> opens the mail. It's just us. Yeah. I Yeah. We didn't throw anything out. We didn't misplace anything. Now, we did not know what it was. We did not get a mail delivery today. Uh-huh, great. Uh, but I assume one was there yesterday because the pickup request came during the normal hours. Yeah, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes that just means that, like, a truck came by. They right, were but, just but there taking was, those. There was no mail waiting to go out today is what I'm saying. Right, but I mean, like, just because someone came by to pick up the packages doesn't mean they also dropped off mail. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Like, we've had that happen before where it is literally not your mail carrier. It is just someone with a truck who comes by to get the stuff. True. Uh, the new Evergrey album, uh, I don't know, Rise of the Phoenix, I think it's called, okay. came out last Friday. I had pre-ordered it. Mm-hmm. I still haven't gotten it. Mm-hmm. I got a shipping confirmation that it got sent out. It's been out for a week. Still don't have it. We didn't get mail today. I'm sure it's uh, in, in a bag with the ENIAC pin. <laughs> Probably. So on the one hand, don't like the idea of bad idea making people wait outside in a group, in a pandemic. No. Uh, on the other hand, I also don't like that we don't have the pin to give the person they got it. Yeah. Kind of a no-win situation. There. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, uh, I was going to say, you can debate it forever, like I just said before. Mm-hmm. One of their rules is no variant covers. Right. But I really feel that the not first print is a variant addition. Yeah. Because it has a different cover and it has an extra page yeah. that is not in the first print. Yeah. It's not a story page. But it is an extra page of content you don't get if you bought the first print. Yeah, I was talking to uh, our club member, Charlie, and I'd mentioned how disappointed we were that they opted not to just 
print more copies without de um, delineating like which was a print one and which was a second print, and which yeah. was a third print or whatever. That if they had just said, we printed more copies to, to meet demand and we're going to keep printing more copies to meet demand until demand stops, like that would have been great with us. And he was not into that idea because he thought it was like detrimental to collectors that there's people who are going to want a first print and, and to find out that there's just a limitless number of copies out there like that was that would harm the collectability of it. And I, I see what he's getting at. And I mean, I'm sure that's part of the decision making for bad idea. But a bigger part of me was just like, I fundamentally don't care. Sure. Like that, that, that's that, like saying putting out a fire in a building um, could be detrimental to pyromaniacs. It's like it could. The argument doesn't sway me. I don't uh, care. <laughs> I, I think specifically for the mission statement of bad idea, it would like playing into the collectability goes against what they're doing. I mean, ultimately, the the plant the, it's supposed to get people in the comic stores. But to, that's the thing. Like to guess, read comics. I guess the argument is, like, there's there's everything bad idea said, and then there's kind of the market effect, and at that point you can kind of debate. Well, is this achieving what they want or is this not achieving what they want like we look at the idea of them doing a not first print edition as this is a variant this makes the the first print more collectible and that's the opposite of what bad idea is supposed to be about but it's like bad idea specifically limited the number of stores bad idea uh made it harder to get this book they're not doing digital they're not doing you know direct consumer sales uh they also um aren't doing trade so if you want to read the story you have to go buy this comic book so like they're already doing a lot of things to increase collectability. A lot of it, though, is under the auspices of, like, it's just about the story. So it's like, yeah, I... The idea that the bad idea doesn't care about collectors, like, I don't know that that's the case. Like, I think it... I think they definitely care about collectors. I mean, one of their big things was was reaching out to us and saying, and, and all their accounts, to say, like, who are the people who spend the most money? We want them to be on board with bad idea. And a lot of the people who spend the most money are collectors. You know? Yeah. Uh, one of the... Well, like, they asked they asked us for five names. Mm -hmm. And those people got a handwritten... Well, their name hand-printed on a card. Mm -hmm. All about bad idea. And it was me who picked the names. Mm -hmm. And I picked people that, A, I knew just were all in for bad idea. Sure. But then just people who have a wide variety of tastes of things they get. Sure. And two of the people so far that got the cards who weren't down for any act both did yeah, I'll buy it. That's cool. They they made this card for me, I'll do this. That's neat. One of them went all in for everything. One of them's like, yeah, I'll try this book. Sure. But it was also after I'd said it's a really good book. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if the the quality remains high and everything else. Yeah, I mean the the I guess the bullet point for the first week of sales for Bad Idea books is it was not uh, nearly as infuriating as the months leading up to it. So that's great. It's kind of turned a corner in that sense where it's just like, oh, this is a known quantity now. We know what to expect. I I gotta imagine the hype is not going to keep increasing. It's probably a thing where, like, the first Bad Idea book was a thing that people were hyper focused on, like. Thankfully, I don't think we'll have to deal with nearly as much, like, drama or frustration from people for, like, any Act 3 or Tankers 2 or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, by that point, I think it will mostly just be readers or, you know, you'll have people who want first issues and whatever. But, yeah, I don't think we'll have to deal with as much stress. Yeah, who would have thought that Berserker would have been all the stress this week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Dal, I'll I want to know if we as a store can and if you don't want to do this this is fine mm -hmm. but more and more we're getting a lot of generic hey do you have this emails uh-huh and i just want to respond with uh like basically a form sentence we have hey thanks for asking uh here's a link to our website which has the our full stock of everything we have in store mm -hmm. uh you know so, comics and graphic novels yeah yeah, yeah. feel free to browse your heart's content mm -hmm. literally while you were talking about Bad Idea, a, a one just came up. I was wondering, do you have East of West volume? Whatever. Right. And I, I, it's not that I don't want to answer the question. That's that I want to teach them that they can look on their own all the time. You know? 
Give a man a fish he eats for a day. Right. Teach a man a fish. Right. But I mean, you can like, order east of west on our website. I, and I feel finish like the process. if I do this myself, like I feel like you would just say, like you would. I would just check. You would ju- <laughs> even if, if if you were at home, you would look up. You would log oh, in the system. Oh, look I would, up. I would not do that. No. Yeah. No. no. I mean, if, if I, would, I'm, I would wait until the next day's business day. Like if if it comes in at like, you know, seven o'clock, on a weekday when we close at five. That's not going to get checked until I'm, I or someone else is back in the store at eleven a.m. the next day. So yeah, if I'm in the store, I would be. I would look and I'd say, "We do FYI, you can look at our, you can browse our entire inventory." Yeah, I, blah blah blah. I think it's a thing where I'm comfortable doing it after hours. Okay. Like, because that way, not only like, because a lot of the times what we'll say is like, let's say we find it. Yeah. You know, I, I log into RMH. Yep, we got a copy of it, and I email the person back. Yeah, we got a copy. The next thing is going to be, oh, can you set it aside for me? So, like, at least this way you overcome that by saying, look, not only can you find out if we've got it online, but if we if we have it, you can just buy it and pick it up later. Yeah. Free in-store pickup. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe we should have some sort of form response for after-hours requests. Sure. If you want to write it up, and then I'll just have a copy of it that I can use okay. when I need to. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, do you want it to say something like, hey, unfortunately, our store is closed right now, however... Yeah. Yeah, and then, like, here's a link to our store. You can order for local pickup, or or you can pay for party mail shipping. And then maybe have a thing at the end where it's like, uh, if you're still having problems navigating our, our online storefront, you have questions, please let us know, and we'll check next time we're in. F- please feel free to call during normal business hours. No, I mean, I, I, I if people don't want to call, if they want to conduct their business through email, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, that's my point. I, I know, but I want to give people that option. So, yeah, just a, a little thing at the bottom saying... You know, if you have problems, email us back and we'll check the next time we're in the store. Something like that. To let them know, like, look, if you don't, if you either can't or don't want to navigate our online storefront, let us know and then you're going to wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> like, it is not going to happen when you email us at 9 at night or 7 in the morning or whenever some of these requests come in. It's going to happen during store hours. Man, who wouldn't rather just deal with it yourself online? Uh, I do so much of our southern hobby ordering you do online now you do well because it's easier i get it i I don't blame you only i had to do two today because i forgot what i like you know you you start something and then you get distracted sure and then by the time you get back to it like oh let me just let me just x this out blah blah, 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 i'm done then it's like oh i hadn't finished reading the list of what was available sure let me go back and add some more things onto that and on the one hand, if it's an automated system that just, like if it's a pull box system or something, mm-hmm. fine. But if each time I do it, it's extra work for Garrett, I feel a little bit bad. Sure. I mean, I'm I'm doing it to make life easier. Like, I remember when Stuart Shrek from DC Comics used to call us every week for a reorder. Mm-hmm. And then we got Comic Suite. And I'm like, hey, it's automatic now. Yeah. We don't have to place order with DC, and it's like I I'm taking that facet of his job. Yeah, your job has been automated away, away from you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. And it w- it was his job to be like, hey, what about this? Do you need this? Or we have this on special or whatever. But none of that usually worked on us anyway. No, like, no, we know what we need. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing with like order increases and FOCs and stuff like that. You know. Yeah. Like the days of, well, here's where we're, you know. We've got copies of this still in stock at the warehouse, and it goes on sale in three weeks. But then with the advent of final order cutoff, it's like, well, I just, I can already change my numbers, and you're giving me all the data. Like, occasionally with a rep, you'd actually get something where it's like, hey, just to let you know, this is going to be a huge issue or whatever. But we've had that happen sometimes where reps are like, oh, this is going to be huge. And they tell us, and we're like, nobody here is going to care about that. No. No one's going to ask about that here. It's huge for you as a publisher. Um, It's not huge to, like, our customer base. Or whenever you get the uh, emails from a distributor saying, like, hey, these are all the things that are on uh, super clearance. Like, yeah, that's because it's it's, it's books junk. nobody <laughs> wants. Well, I wasn't going to say junk. but it's junk. It's stuff that we don't want. That's why you're selling it so cheap. Yeah. Like, that's why I feel our sales are a little bit different because we rarely ever do just sales on the garbage. Yeah, we've got clearance stuff, but, you know, it's not like a, a time limit. Right, like it's yeah. yeah. We're not trying it's to just trick like, you. We have reduced this in price. Hopefully, it'll sell now. Yep. 
It's a new month, and it's now time to thank our Patreon supporters, including our annual patrons, Becca Hilburn, Brent Helt, Dal's mom, Diane Bush, Jose Villagomez, Josh Crawley of Westfield Comics, Michael Romanenko, our patrons that have created their own tier, Andrew Drutroit Comics, Aaliyah, Christina McChrystal, Bridget K. Neville, Chris Burton, our other generous patrons from the Say My Name tier, Arun Singh, Social Media Vampire, Ben-Hur, Benedict Calaguas, Chris Carr, Christopher Haith, Don Cardenas, Drew Triner, and Ashley Edwards, Challengers Reservist, Fallon Mackerlein, my brother George W. Brower, Heidi D., Jacob Sorelli of Kamikaze in Tel Aviv, Josh Trigg, Mark Hammond of Oh Yeah Comics, Margie, Keith, Logan, and Malcolm Springham, Marcus Nasso, Matt Armstrong, Mitchell Davies of All Star Comics in Melbourne, Australia, former challenger Molly Jane Kramer, Morgan Kaiju Perry, Nick Baldwin, Robert Burns, Ryan Alcock, Ryan Hecht, Sean Bowers, Tad Eggleston and Johnny Williams, Thomas Nagovin of Century Guild. And if you would like to hear your name thanked once a month on this very podcast, head over to patreon.com slash challengers and pledge at the $5 Say My Name level. Thank you all very much, and a big thanks to all of our other patrons who generously support this podcast at different pledge tiers. This is not comic related or really fit for a podcast and also definitely not fit for children so if you have any youngsters listening to this episode of contest challengers you may want to uh turn off now or, or distract them for the next like 30 seconds but normally if we have subjects we know we're going to discuss they go up on the the contest of challengers whiteboard mm-hmm. we didn't have any subjects uh this week no and someone someone drew a very large, very accurate cock and balls mm-hmm. up on the whiteboard. Yeah. And it brings me joy. <laughs> it it actually like makes me smile when I look at it. That's great. That's what art should it's, do, right? It's so childish mm-hmm. and so like pointless. Well there's kind of a point actually. It's something. Yep, right there. And it's it's like what what is this? Oh, it's also ejaculating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is this episode of Contest Challenge is going to be about? Ejaculating penises. Yep, there it is. Oh, that's the title. Oh no. No, definitely not. So uh, who knows? Who knows what the subject matter will be next week? Same topic, I gotta assume. <laughs> I do too. Mm-hmm. We'll find out next week. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago, 773-278-0155. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com. Like Challengers Comics on Facebook, follow at Challengers on Twitter, and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.